Hello, Happy New Year! My name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. First of all, I hope that you had a awesome new year and I wish you an excellent, fruitful, full of love and smiles and inspiration new year 2023. To kick things off on my deep guide, we are starting this year with a brand new test. So similar like I have devised the DESTA test to measure out the writing latency of different e-ink devices, because I was in the everlasting quest to quantify the writing experience, um, this new test is also in that same realm and it falls under defining the aspects and the qualities of a writing experience. What quantifies, what creates a pleasant or a good writing experience and what quantifies or creates a bad writing experience. So first of all, we already have the writing latency, that's the test, good for that. The second aspect of the writing experience, I believe, is the writing surface and how close to paper it feels. That might not have to be for everyone, but it is a consistent point of comparison because you have the um, paper-like screen protectors and everybody's saying like, oh, it's like paper, it's like paper, it sounds like paper, blah, blah, blah. But the point is the friction of the surface itself or the nib against the surface, right? So that is actually what I have devised. So let's dive in. All right, so before I dig into and show you the device and we start doing the testing and seeing actually what we get, just a short background on the concept behind this testing device and the approach. And it all has to do with this little formula here, which says force of kinetic friction equals kinetic friction coefficient, which is what we're going to be looking for. Uh, times normal force on the object. Because this is going to be a short but physics explanation, I'm gonna give you some relaxing stuff on the side as well so that uh, you can be entertained while I uh, shortly explain this to those who are interested. So basically what happens is that the, the normal force is basically our force that the pen is pressing down onto the screen. So for that one I did a lot of research and I finally managed to find a Japanese study that was done basically on handwriting forces and habits and things like that and it precisely measured like normal writing equals to about 1.5 newtons and when you do the conversion with the gravity and everything you get it to be at around 153 grams and heavy writing 459 grams. So my goal was to actually have a consistent force pressing down and something that holds a nib or two nibs at the same time at approximately or at least 153 grams or a little bit more. So that takes care of the normal force and that part of the equation. What we're looking for is the kinetic friction coefficient. So I needed some way of getting the force of kinetic friction in newtons, right? And for that, there is a dedicated meter and a lab device that I had to actually purchase. And it's a uh, solder and the model is FH2. So this one is able to actually measure the pulling and pushing force via here to 1000 of a Newton, right? So it's a very, very precise uh, type of a meter and that's exactly what I needed. So the machine is going to measure out the FF and then we will be able to extract the kinetic friction coefficient of the surface of different devices. And one last thing that I needed to do as a reference point and to see how far off the device is because this isn't a lab. So I need to see how far off I'm going to be. And uh, the kinetic coefficient of a regular paper is 0 0.174, which basically translates to the uh, uh, friction force of 0.261 newtons or thereabouts. So if we have uh, 153 grams, then we should see 0.0261 newtons. Then I have a point of comparison and you guys also have a point of comparison. And that means 
then if that crazy contraption and this craziness works, then we will have a comparison point against paper. So direct comparison point, how uh, rougher, how smoother than the paper feel it is, and also how the different devices, the smoothness, uh, how it actually compares amongst each other. So a very, very important element of writing experience that up until now we've been basically kind of describing it as oh it feels smooth it feels a little bit more paper like or it feels like this or like that and um, this is a way to finally quantify that part as well so let's get going all right so this is going to be the carrier and you can see that we have two remarkable one nibs, one on each side, so that it provides kind of a sliding type of thing. Now, um, this one is filled with uh, AAA batteries to get an approximate weight. I'll probably find something else. And it currently weighs at 166 grams. So it's a little bit more than uh, what the uh, uh, standard type of uh, writing force or writing weight is on the paper. At the front, you have a little hook, and that hook is going to be basically a tow hook. So a tow hook is here, and then it holds this one in place. And let's show you the whole contraption, and then this will make a bit more sense. All right, so here is the whole contraption. This is the brain that's connected to the motor, and this is the platform that's going to simply hold the device and roll it around here using these uh, cogs. So basically the device goes in here. It has these guidelines. So you have to just align it and make sure that all of the cogs are in place. That's good. Now this platform here is basically a stand for this meter. Now this one is screwed in, so it's really, really tight. It's not going nowhere, which is important. So this one goes over here. Next goes in the hook. And this hook is connected to the meter itself. So if something is pulling on this hook by a very, very small amount, this meter is going to measure that pulling force. So that means that this one gets hooked up here and the device is going to, or the machine is going to slowly move the device backwards. This one is connected to the force and as it is being moved backwards by the friction force, then we will see how much friction we will have from there. So basically that looks like this. So it's slowly moving backwards and this guy is going to measure the force. All right, so very simple. And once that's done, we just reposition it back and then repeat the test several times to actually have a uh, mean average. So that is how the testing station is set up to work. Now, let's do the paper test and see where we're at. And uh, yeah, if this thing <laughs> is just a crazy idea or are we somewhere within the realms of accuracy, which would be a very, very good point to be. All right, I've done some slight modifications here. I took out one of the batteries and a couple of parts, and I managed to get this whole thing to exactly 153 grams. So now I don't have to do any recalculations or anything like that. And I can just simply try and measure this one out. So. We have this is tight, this is tight. We have a piece of paper here and let's go. So let's do auto peaks. <laughs> 257. We're looking for 261, but okay. So that was the lower peak, but we got 257 at this point. Let's repeat and see if we can get this as a consistent result. Okay, 220, 30, 40, okay, 77. Still within realms of what I would find acceptable considering that this is hardly super awesome precise stuff, but it's precise enough. I just needed to be precise enough and 
reliable enough so that we can actually have a point of comparison. So let's do three more. There we go, 254, 263. We're looking for 261. This is okay. There was a peak at 280, but 266, let's say. Okay, that's three. Very, very consistent. This is going to work. Yeah, okay, that was a lower peak because the paper went up, but still we had 242. So that's still within realms of acceptable. And a final one. Yeah, there we go, 246. I am very, very, very happy with these results. We were looking for 261. And considering that I don't know exactly what the grade of paper is and that this is you know, not that <laughs> there are deviations here. It's not super perfect. So this is far more precise than what I was hoping for. So I haven't written down these, but I'm going to take them in editing and then I'm going to average out and then we're going to have the um, that is going to be as the starting point. And from that, I'm going to Calculate the coefficient of dynamic friction for this type of paper, that standard printing paper. And we're going to use that as a standard point of comparison for the surfaces of different devices. So now it's time to just start testing, doing this on all of the different devices, repeat it at least five times on each of the devices. And then I'm going to average it out and bring you the results. And I honestly don't know what to expect because that's the whole point. What do we consider? What do I consider more comfortable, less comfortable? What's glassy? What's glidey? What's the difference between Remarkable 1 and 2? Because everybody said, and I also agree, that Remarkable 2 feels more glidey and more glassy than Remarkable 1. And I'm just really curious to see if this is going to actually give us quantifiable data and a point of comparison to actually understand this element of the writing experience that is quite, quite important. All right, so now that you've seen how the device works and what it actually does and what its purpose is, I have proceeded and I have performed all of the tests. And yeah, here are the results. All right, so here you can see just the raw sheet with the numbers here. And as you can see, each device has had the tests repeated five times. And then the FF value is basically averaged out from that. As you can clearly see, there are definitely offsets uh, here and there. So it the precision is not super nailed down yet. Um, this is the first time I've ever actually done this to see if it works or, or not. So basically proof of concept kind of thing. And I'm happy that it actually does work because if I check out the printing paper, what we get is an average of 2.63 newtons, 0 0.263 newtons. Newtons, and the regular average of a paper is uh, measured in a lab is 0.261 newtons. And the kinetic friction coefficient that I measured using this contraption in my little room is 0.175 and measured in the lab is 0.17. So that actually gives me a very, very good baseline for comparison against the paper and that the methodology is, despite these offsets that you can see in the results, the, the, the little variations here and there, I can get a meaningful result at the end. The, the mean value is meaningful enough to at least provide us a comparative point between the devices and against the same nib writing on top of a paper. So with that out of the way and clarified and established, um, the first chart that we're going to check out now is they're all aligned from roughest to smoothest, all the way down to smoothest. And again, this is the very first time that I'm seeing any of this. So 
I'm going to be working on uh, revising the device or the, the, the testing, uh, testing desk to get even better results because one of the things is I'm going to try and extend it so that I can provide for a longer period of testing so that the average that the, uh, the force meter is actually doing has more time to establish a more accurate reading, right? Now I can only afford like 10 seconds before the device is off. But um, that's also going to be limited by the size of the device as well. So I'm not really sure how far I can stretch it, but I'm going to try and get like every second uh, more in the test matters. So that's one of the things that I'm going to try and do. Now, as for the test results and interpretation, um, I haven't had time to spend too much rummaging around it, but I can tell you immediately what my impression is, what my interpretation is, and what we can conclude from these results and from this test and what it actually tells us. So what we can start with is that the printing paper is our baseline and it starts at the 0263 Newton force or the kinetic friction. It doesn't matter which one you look at from these values, the blue or the red, they're all going to scale proportionally. I just offered them here for somebody who might be interested in either of the two values. So I'm going to be focusing on the blue values here simply because they're easier to read which is the device that is closest to the paper feel. Without any shadow of a doubt, and by quite a large margin, it's actually Quirk Logic paper. And that's not a surprise to me at all, because every time I wrote on that device, I continually thought, boy oh boy, this feels like paper, this feels different, this really feels different. And now we have a quantifiable result that tells us why and how close to paper, Quirk Logic paper actually is. The one that's actually quite a bit of a surprise for me is that the next one in line, the next closest one to the paper feel is actually Kobo Ellipsa. But that tells you so much about how horrible that pen is. And if only Kobo Ellipsa had a Wacom layer so that you could use any EMR pen, I absolutely guarantee you that that device would have been a bigger success. However, none of us were able to even experience or get to the point that Kobo Ellipse's surface is actually very good and very paper-like, but we cannot feel that because of that horrible pen that uses absolutely terrible nibs and therefore hey presto, your, your end results are terrible. So you can't half half results. You have to have all of these things to actually have a meaningful and a good quality writing experience. And that's something that I find very, very interesting already now with these results. Next, I tested also the Tab P11 Pro. That's my regular tablet, but it has a screen protector, which is classified as paper-like. This one should represent basically uh, roughly what a paper-like screen protector. Of course, there's going to be quite a bit of variation between from screen protector to screen protector, as you'll see here as well. But this one feels like a good paper-like screen protector, and it is at 0 0.162. Nope, sorry, 0 0.139 um, uh, is as opposed to 0.263 of paper. Well, we're gonna have percentage values as well, or actually, let's just switch to the percentages immediately. And this is like how much like paper uh, the devices are. So you can see that my baseline value is quite, quite close to the original. So the original is the lab result, and that would be 100%. The one that I measured is 100.77%. So that's good enough as far as I'm concerned to actually um, measure the differences between the devices as meaningful and the results as mostly valid. More on that a little bit later. So Quirk Logic pa pa paper, papier, is 75.8% of a paper, of a true paper surface. So that's actually pretty good. Then we have Kobo Ellipsa at 61.92%. Now we stopped at the Tab P11 Pro at 53.33. And very, very close to it is the original Remarkable 
one at 53.1%, which is very, very interesting to me because you remember um, when I was talking about it's going to be interesting to see the difference between Remarkable 1 and Remarkable 2, and that everybody, when they started writing on Remarkable 2, that it felt more glidey, more glassy, etc., etc. Well, here you go. Remarkable 1, 53.1%. Remarkable 2, 27.43% of the roughness or friction of a paper-like feel. So no, people are not crazy at all when they go back to Remarkable 1 and they say like, oh my god, this just feels so much better. It's it's the friction, definitely, amongst other things. But the surface friction absolutely is a huge difference between Remarkable 2 and Remarkable 1. Again, a very insightful and interesting result. Then we have Supernote A6X. And this one I wanted to mark as a red because there's an aspect to the testing of the, the way that I test this, which is prone to giving me not invalid results, but not actual uh, friction per se, not roughness of the surface, because Supernote has a very specific type of a screen surface. And that surface is kind of rubbery and it's soft. And when you actually start using a regular felt-like nib on it, and not the harder one like the Lamy is, but the softer uh, uh, felt-like nibs, it's a little sticky. And basically here, the measuring, measuring of the surface resistance here is not only due to the friction, but it's actually due to stickiness. And I was half, half, half on uh, basically disregarding the A6X results, but I thought it was important to actually include them and to explain this one. So, for example, what I'm talking about, A6X, I don't use that often and it is in storage. A5X, I use very often and is not in storage. When you're using a regularly surface like this, your hand is wiping over the surface continually. It's lubricating it with the, whole, uh, with the hand oils and all of these things. So the surface will be less sticky. The one that was not used, A6X, I basically just whip it out for testing and updates, and that's about it, is demonstrating a much, much higher surface resistance than the Supernote A5X. And as you can see, 45.21% of a paper-like surface resistance, A6X, while the A5X, the one that I use regularly, is 14.56. Now, they are supposed to have the exact same surface. That's where I'm starting from. So that's why I have that uh, assumption that maybe it has to do with the use and the stickiness of that soft surface is what is causing the discrepancy between the two. Because theoretically, they should be the same but when I was measuring the surface resistance, they are not. And this is the thing that makes the most sense to me at the moment. But it could be anything else, because as I said, first time measuring this, and I'm just simply thinking out loud here. Then we get to the MobiScribe origin at 42.61. Kindle Scribe, which feels really, really good because of that pen and everything, and it is, it does feel paper-like, but it's not paper-like. So we are reacting to something other than the surface friction or the resistance of the surface itself to characterize the writing feel as paper-like or not paper-like. And this test makes it very, very clear. It's not as simple as writing latency surface resistance. There's something more. And I think that probably some other stuff is going to be there. I'm, I'm definitely going to be exploring this whole writing experience thing more and more to try and quantify it and understand it as best as I can. But interestingly, Kindle Scribe, I would characterize as one of the most pleasant uh, writing experiences. But for me personally, that sense of pleasant apparently is not directly tied to the paper-like surface resistance, because it's at 36.63%, which is quite, quite low. Huawei Made Pad Paper is at 31.26. And then we have Books Nova Air 1, which has a pre-applied paper-like screen surface. And we can see that it's at 29.66% of an actual paper. So 
It's called paper-like and it does give a scratchy feel, but just making a surface kind of wobbly, uh, that's not what paper-like screen resistance or surface resistance means because Nova Air 1, it feels good. Don't get me wrong, it feels good. It's all good and nice. But as far as paper-like surface resistance goes, it's actually a little, little bit, a smidge beyond, below a third of what the actual screen re uh, surface resistance is for an actual piece of paper. Closely behind it, we have Remarkable 2, already commented on that. Very, very interesting to see that comparison, Remarkable 1 and Remarkable 2. Then we have Kobo Sage, quite a lot smoother at 22.38%. Then I have my Books Note Air 1 with the screen protector, that's the ESR screen protector, which is, I think they say it's paper-like, but for me, uh, it was smooth when I was actually writing on it, and that's why I like it because I wanted my nibs to last a long time and my priority was uh, reflection diffusion and that one was best at it and definitely not a surprise for me that it is smoother than all of these devices on top of it. That's exactly what I was feeling and that's actually what I was going for. That's something that I preferred. So now I know that I prefer the results somewhere at around 20 to 30 percent of a real paper uh, uh, surface resistance. Very, very insightful thing to see this quantified to actually understand my own preferences. Then we have Tab Ultra, which has no screen protector at all. So that is the equivalent of a true AG glass, and it's at 18.54. And then we have the unique case of the Supernote A5X, and I think that A6X would be there as well if it was regularly used, but this is the unique surface that A5X has, and it just shows that uh, it's a very glidey type of a device, but it does have that stickiness to it, and it really depends what type of surface is going against that type of screen. And there's a reason, obviously there's a reason why they're using ceramic nibs and harder nibs on the Lamy uh, 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 pen to use with this device. So obviously they knew what they were doing because your own traditional soft felt nib doesn't really feel that great and it's a little bit kind of sticky, draggy, and it doesn't feel that good. It doesn't feel as good as the ceramic nib, for example. So, there you go. <laughs> the machine works. We have results. These are the only tests that I can do. I can't do any other devices because I simply don't have them. However, all future devices that are e-note-taking devices, as DESTA is a standard that's being tested, so will this surface uh, resistance test be a normal part of testing methodology and that distance from screen as well. All of these things are kind of building up to a more thorough and more complete testing methodology so that you and me, we can actually understand what our priorities are, especially with the writing feel, because somebody may prefer quirk logic paper, and then you know that you, you're looking for more of a paper-like, uh, true paper-like experience, while somebody else, for example, me, I prefer the feel that I have on a books note there, one, which is like a, a fifth of a roughness or screen resistance, surface resistance of a true paper. So it all really, really depends. One of the obvious things is uh, these results will be different if you use different types of nibs. Now, as long as you're using a generally soft felt nib type, I don't think that these results are gonna be varying too much. The only time when this is actually gonna be a huge variance is if you're using super soft nibs like on Stedler or on Samsung pens when they have a soft nib, you know, the one that wobbles a bit, like a rubbery one. Or if you go in the other direction and you use super hard ones like the ceramic nib of the uh, Supernote or the harder nibs that are used again on Supernote for the Lamy e e M R E S R pen. I don't know, I remember, EMR pen. So those are the things that are gonna vary, but due to the nature of the testing device and how it's made, the overwhelming majority of the devices is going to be used by, in conjunction with these soft felt nibs. So the test is always going to be 
in relation to the soft felt nibs. Neither of the extremes, not the rubbery ones, not the ceramic ones, but soft felt nibs, which is basically the standard that everybody is mostly using. Now, I can easily swap that out and also then the testing would just exponentially grow because it's kind of ridiculous to go from you know there maybe sometime in the future i am going to do like a comparison of the same device and different nibs so that we can see what kind of offset that gives us and then maybe we can actually have like okay so if I use a harder nib, then this is going to be like this. And if I use a softer nib, then it's going to be like that. That I think makes sense. But for now we have this. And once I have that, then we're going to have a more complete experience. But so far, there you go. Surface screen resistance quantified. The paper-like feel quantified on my deep guide. I don't have a name for this device yet. I tried to kind of rack my brain and figure something out, but nothing really popped. I'm gonna give it some more time. But if you have some suggestions that uh, can be like an, an acronym of uh, surface resistance screen display or something like that test, then we can actually, you know, play around and see if we can come up with a decent name together or not. Um, but either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed the, and that I was able to share the excitement of the nerdiness and geekiness over this whole thing. I mean, talk about niche within a niche, but still, this is something that I really love and this is something that I'm very passionate about to actually understand and uh, quantify something that was a feel into a result, which is something that's actually quite an interesting thing to see because I find those things far more insightful and that helps me understand my own needs, wants and everything far better. Comment down below, let me know what your thoughts are, if uh, if you have some more ideas what I could do to expand on this more or yeah, what your type of feel is, do you think that this is a useful type of a test, does this kind of results, do they actually help you in some way or not to understand your uh, uh, needs better? But the whole purpose of this is to, first of all, help understand what it is that your preference is. And then second of all, uh, basically make an informed purchasing decision because you'll see like, okay, so I don't know, uh, Tab Ultra 10 uh, has this and this type of surface resistance and that's really something I like or something that I really dislike. So that's the whole idea behind all of this and I hope that you find it uh, helpful now and in the future. Please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below and also check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop to check out the My Daily Organizer for 2023, which handles all of your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily organizing needs for your private or professional life. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.